I've delayed doing this review video for about a month. I think it's now time I spill the beans and tell you exactly what I think about these irons. So my name's Andy and I run this channel, this is Andy Plays Golf and I make relatable down to earth golf videos for mid to high handicap golfers and sometimes for the good golfers you might see some good shots but it's quite rare. So if you like what you see in this video and other videos please give that subscribe button a wee tickle and make sure you like and comment the video because it really seriously helps me out. So direct to consumer brands is kind of the new cool way to buy golf clubs. It saves us, the buyers, a lot of money because the brands save a lot of money because they're not dealing with all the reps, all the retailers, so they can keep the cost way way down. So that means a set of 40 pitching wedge clubs that like I've got in my bag the now will retail at £499. Yes, you will get change from £500 for a brand new set of clubs for a pitching wedge. So the brand of club that I'm talking about in this video and what I've got in my hand is the new 01T irons from Cali. Yes, it said Cali for all you other YouTubers that call it Kaylee and Kali and all these other crazy things. It is Cali and that's from the mouth of a Scotsman. So Cali is short for Caledonia or Caledonian, which was the name that the Romans gave to us lovely Scots who were north of the River Forth, I believe. I'll put it on screen. I got that from Wikipedia. That's not just general Scottish knowledge. We don't learn that in those Scottish schools. So Cali is one of these direct to consumer brands and we already spoke about how it can save money. So as I said, £499 for a full set for to pitching wedge on these irons. They've already brought out irons before. I've already done a video on, I think, the first generation of irons that Wilson got. I'll put it up on the screen the now. Go and give that a wee watch. They were some fantastic irons, which, to be honest, I think that video's two years old, and he only got rid of those irons about two months ago, and we had to pry them out his hands because he absolutely loved them, and he seriously improved his game, which is something I'm going to talk about with these irons later on in the video. So in this video, we're going to do a lot of different shots. We're going to do full shots. We're going to do partial shots. We're going to do some shot shaping. And also we're going to do around the green because I think it's quite important to make sure that you are still using the clubs around the green and you can manipulate it to play different kinds of shots. So that's one of the main reasons why I delayed doing this video because I wanted to play the irons. I'm not just one of those YouTubers that pick up the club and then later on that day pumps out a video on them because it helps the algorithm and helps our views. I want to make sure that the information I'm passing over to you guys is true and reflective of the clubs. So there's probably 15 to 20 rounds in these clubs over the past month. I've played every single round with them, so I believe I can pass the information over to you guys with some experience. So I'm going to hit this shot first of all. I've got eight iron in hand. It is 130 yards to the green and the wind is absolutely howling into my face. Normally that would be just a nice comfortable pitching wedge, but I'm going to take an eight iron just to keep it nice and low. Pins at the right side of the green, so we're probably going to aim just slightly left of that and just bring it round. We will talk about the looks, the feel, everything like that in just a wee minute. I just want to hit a wee shot first of all to show you that they are in fact real clubs. That is drifting off to the right. Oh, back right of the green. Not a bad shot, but... So this year Cali have brought out two different irons. They've got the 01T irons that I've got in my bag and they've also brought out the 01 iron. The difference between them is the 01T iron is designed for kind of mid handicap golfers that are looking to improve in their game and hopefully get down to single figures. The 01 iron is a wee bit bigger, a bit more forgiving and it's designed for the kind of mid to high handicap golfers that's looking to get into that mid handicap bracket. I've not unfortunately had a chance to play the 01 iron, I've only got the 01T iron, but that's maybe a future video if Ryan's kind enough to send me a set. Let's take a look at the clubs while I'm walking and I'll show you some close-up shots. So the 01T iron, as I said, is a player's distance iron. It's basically designed for higher ball speed, distance and higher forgiveness. It's got a slightly smaller face against the, the 01 club. 
and it's basically for players looking to improve in an already decent game. So with the hollow body construction, they usually put like a foam or some sort of gel insert inside the face. The face is a lot thinner on the Zero One T iron and it means that when the ball hits the face it's a lot springier and you get a lot more kind of powerful ball speed coming off that. That's something I do feel in these irons. I do feel as if you get that spring from the face. It feels incredibly soft and you don't get that click or that ting that you normally get for, the, for those kind of power distance irons. And it just comes off the face beautifully. I do notice a wee bit higher kind of launch angle and I notice that the ball apex is a lot higher than normal but it's not at the detriment to distance or speed if anything it's probably increased the way you think about it is you've not got any friction in the sky it's the minute it hits the ground that's when you get the friction so they're definitely quite powerful irons normally I've played with kind of bladey construction irons so it was quite good to see how I got on with these over the month and I'll be honest with you it's kind of opened my eyes up to the differences in different irons that you can get. It was probably down to Ego that I was using those kind of bladey irons because I wanted people to look at my bag and go oh aye he's a player when in fact it's got nothing to do with that it's about how well you can shoot. One thing I wanted to talk about is when it comes to players distance irons. As I mentioned previously, the thinner face, it springs off the face. When you want these control shots like pit shots and chip shots, this is where you can start to lose the control because a lot of irons out there than now, they're so dead set and increasing ball speed and getting your distance up that when it comes to these shots, when you want to use a pitching wedge or you want to use an nine iron round the green, your ball goes flying because you've still got that springy face that wants to jump off. The minute I picked these clubs up when going from the previous Wilson irons that I had, I felt like it was just a click and play. There was no difference between the irons. I felt that I'd just put a natural swing, pick my landing spot, and that's where it would land. I didn't feel it was going too long. And this is where I fluff it up. See, because I've spoke so highly of it. This is when I'm going to duff the chip. Hey, it wasn't bad. Just a, a rubby shot, right past the hole. But anyway, it feels good and it's natural. That's the thing that I like. Okay, so we're on a par three here, but first of all, let's talk about the looks, right? So there's the back of the club. You've seen them on the Eclipse before. And the only thing I can really describe it as is the P series of the TaylorMade clubs. I'd probably say, if anything, the top line in the face and the back of it, it's a wee bit more P770 than the 90s, which isn't a bad thing, to be honest. But just taking a look at the top line, if I can show you, it's not as thick as you think it would be. And one thing I want to mention is the sole, right? Just have a wee look at that leading edge on there. The leading edge is ever so slightly turned up. It's not as sharp as other clubs. Like, I'll just show you my wedges. I know wedges are a bit different, right? But I'll show you my Cobra wedges. Here's my 54 degree. Just have a wee look at how sharp that leading edge is. One thing I've noticed with these clubs is that even though, yes, they do go through the tough quite well, they don't unnaturally go through. I feel with that leading edge just being a wee bit blunt, I feel that it goes into the turf but wants to get out as quick as possible, which is a good thing when you do take quite big divots, you know, when you're maybe not hitting well and you get right into the turf. This wind is really picking up and apologies if you can't hear me. There's a club down at address, it really does look lovely as I say, that, that top line fills you with the confidence but there it is sitting with a, with a neutral handle, it looks really really good and as I said there's something quite sexy about those grooves, I really do like them but again they are just very pretty irons. So when it comes to full shots, having the confidence that you've got an iron that is going to give you the ball speed and it's going to give you the distance is great. Knowing that you can maybe hit a wee bit further and out hitting your pals is wonderful. I've got 155 yards downwind into this par 3. One thing I've worked with over the past year which has seriously changed my game is partial shots, knockdown shots. And for every club in my bag, I know what my full shot distance goes. I also know what a shoulder to shoulder distance goes and I know what a hip to hip distance goes. Some of them like a four iron hip to hip, I'm probably never gonna use. But things like eight iron and nine iron, shoulder to shoulder and hip to hip shots have really saved my game, especially into wind. But even downwind, as golfers, we don't think that if I send a wedge up in there, I don't know what's happening up there, I can't see it. I can feel it, but I can't really see it, and it's uncontrollable. So what I want to do is I want to keep it as low as I possibly can, take the wind out of the equation, and just play what I feel is a normal shot, so that the wind isn't a factor. So I know that if I play a shoulder to shoulder, 
eight iron, that goes roughly 140 yards to 145. So the pin here is about 150 yards today. So that is for me an absolutely safe shot. And obviously if the wind catches it a wee bit, that's fine. But we're hopefully keeping it low enough. We're taking the spin off it and it should hopefully perform just as I want it to. And we should be nice and safe on the green. Drawing in just a bit, running out, and that is in the middle of the green. Like, that's a shot that we probably don't ever think about, but knocking it down into the wind is fine, but also knocking it down downwind is something which has seriously changed my game. Just take the wind out of the equation. Oh, and uh, let's talk about my wee trolley. This has been a wee relic, I brought it back for life. It's fucking pulling me away. So this wee thing here was a wee barn find. It was a guy that was giving it away on Gumtree because he had the battery, but none of the mechanics of it worked. He didn't know what was wrong with it. And I figured out just by doing some testing in the wiring that it was a wiring that went from the wee kind of CPU module that goes into the handle. So as you can see, this white bell wire is just a temporary fix that I've done just to see if it works. But it's a wee winner. The battery is great as well. It seems to last a full round but it does pull to the right, so I need to get a new bearing on the front wheel. But other than that, it's lovely. Yeah, I didn't realise that the pin was up the back. That's pretty decent, by the way. Happy with that. That's the main thing I've found with these irons, is just the confidence it gives you just to throw the club at the ball and it's going to do its thing. If this is going to be an upgrade set, so if you're fairly new to golf and you've got like a package set or something like that, you're going to seriously, seriously notice the difference in these clubs. They're going to provide you with so much more confidence. These package sets are great. The ones that you get out of like American Golf and that, they are great. But one thing they lack is that controllability, which is probably not a word that even exists, but we're using it. And what I mean by that is the ability to short shape, the ability to learn with the clubs, being able to go to a lesson and know that the clubs in your bag are good enough is fantastic. These clubs, since I've had them, have been a talking point through many of medals I've played and many games I've played. Guys love the fact that they're local brands and guys love the fact that they're from Scotland, it's independent and they're just something a wee bit different. So another reason why I waited a month before doing this review is because I'm going to be alternating between these and another couple of sets of clubs throughout the season. And I wanted to know that, all right, they look good out the bag, but do they look good in the bag? And what I mean by that is, do I feel okay pulling them out of the golf club at a weekend? Because there is some golf clubs out there that guys are going to go, look at him, right? And unfortunately, that is just the way golf is. You get some horrible guys out there, and I don't scoop down to them. I don't ever come down to their level. But it's a confidence thing, eh? You want to know that the clubs you've got in your bag look good and perform well. So, let's just look at my bag. I've got my tailor-made clubs, I've got the Cali clubs, and I've got the Scotty. They don't sit out of turn, even against the shiny, shiny chrome of the Cobra snake bite wedges. They sit in there well. They look the part, they look as if they deserve to be there. Sounds stupid, but it'll mean something to somebody. So this is a par five. Normally I would be hitting a driver. This is hole 12 here at Langlands. But for this shot, I'm going to be hitting the three utility iron. If anyone has seen the James Robinson video that I've done, this was one of the irons that we did actually fight for because he loved it and I can see why. I absolutely adore this club. Um, it's a graphite shaft. It is a stiff um, recoil shaft. That, I, mean, I don't know much about shafts, I'm not going to lie. So I'm going to hit this shot here, but there will be a separate video on this club because I think it actually deserves its own video because utility and something I've never really had before and it's made such a difference to my game. I've not actually been hitting that well today and this one's an absolute killer, so I'm hoping I can at least make it over that burn. <laughs> piped it. <laughs> Absolutely piped it. Just caught the right side of the fairway, but my god, I love it. You don't really need to put much of a swing on it, it's just the contrast between the light shaft and the heavy head. It's just an if I can swear, it's an absolute piss missile. It really is. 
And also part of the reason I wanted to hit that three utility is because it gives me a nice opportunity to hit the long irons, which that's not something I say usually feeling confident about, but I do with these. Again, the only way I can describe the four iron and the five iron and even that three iron, they're nine irons, but they go longer, if that makes sense. I just feel as if you can just hit them. That's all you need to do. You just put a fairly decent swing on them and the forgiveness even if you hit, for me, I'm a bit of a heel striker, if I hit the heel, it still goes. If I hit low in the face, which I normally do, it still goes. Sometimes even further by hitting it low in the face. So yeah, let's go and whack the four iron. Just on a side note, but me and Wilson come up with a name for this bad boy. Mind that movie, Wally. So I'm going to see if I can get some stickers for the Wally down the side of it. I think that'd be amazing. Cannot believe I just done that Wally voice on one of my videos. I wholeheartedly apologise, kids. I'm just looking at my 18 birdies here. I am at 230 on the dot. It is severely downwind, as you can probably hear. I'll just see if I can show you my puffer. You see how much that's going downwind. So we do have 243 yards left. I'm still going to take the four iron. It's probably going to leave me. If I hit it well, it should probably leave me say 50 yards in. Don't know what's going to happen with it being so much downwind, but let's whack it anyway. When I do these videos, I'm not really take much of a score anyway. I'm literally just hitting the ball and seeing where it goes. But if I can aim down to that windmill that you should see straight down. But yeah, as I said, nine iron that goes longer. That's all you've got to think about. You don't need to get it in your head. It only goes a four iron or anything else like that. You literally just need to put a club on the back of the ball and let it do its thing. That's the only thing I can say. Wee bit right, but it's down there. My divot has went left, but my ball has went right. Diagnose that, open face, I know what it is, it's an open face. So I'm not wanting to reach out and do this whole kind of make sure you subscribe stuff, I don't like doing that. If you want to subscribe, it's entirely up to yourself. I like to keep this channel quite organic. But one thing I will say is that we do have the three iron review coming out. So if the Cali irons is something that you are interested in, just make sure you subscribe to make sure that you don't miss that video. It should be out within the next week or so. My trolley's probably running ahead of me here. I'm still getting used to how far I should turn the wee switch. I know it's an old one, but it still does. So coming up on the channel in the next six months, yes, I am looking that far ahead. There's a new series going to be starting called the Swing Series, where I completely strip back my full swing. And I mean strip it back. I want to forget everything I know. I want to forget the fundamentals of golf, the grip, the swing, the posture, the full lot and strip it right back to basics. I am going to be working with a coach, whether that's online or physically in person, I will be working with a coach to make sure that I do things properly. I don't want to do what I've done before and rely on YouTube videos and kind of make it up myself. So if you're maybe struggling with your game or that's maybe something that you were thinking about doing yourself, again, make sure you subscribe because you probably don't want to miss that. I think it's going to be quite an interesting experiment. I've lost my ball. It's up the right here. I don't know where it is. I'm just sitting chatting to you and I forgot to look. Anyway, I'll right, we'll go look for it. Yeah, anyone ever heard of a T wedge? The T stands for throw. That's a good shot. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, it's been crazily windy today but I'm hoping that it's came across well enough and that the audio's not too bad. I usually don't find out until I get in the house. So if you are thinking about the Cali irons, give myself a message and I'll certainly talk you through some of the... Well there isn't really any bad points, I was going to say good points and bad points, I don't really think there is. But I'll certainly talk you through what my experience has been. You can get custom fit for these irons, I don't really know much about that process, but if you go on Instagram or you give Ryan an email, he's fantastic. He gets back to you with a lot of information about the clubs which he did do for the making of this video, which I'm very thankful for. But yeah, seriously, just reach out to either myself or Ryan and 
yeah, if you are thinking about doing it, just do it. There's really, for you're getting change out of 500 pounds, you know, what's really, what's really bad about that? And if I didn't know that, again, oh, come on, that was for my throw, by the way. If I didn't know the price of these irons and I had to guess after playing with them, I certainly wouldn't have said £500 at all. And I'm not just saying that, I'm quite good at kind of gauging the quality of irons and they're fantastic. I know there's going to be some comments from kind of Tacomo users and guys saying they're a lot like Tacomo. I don't really understand the relationship with that. I'm not particularly interested. I treat Cali as an independent brand, so yeah. That's all I've got to say about that. But anyway, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much for watching, guys. And I said, please remember and subscribe if you are new here. It really does help my channel out. But other than that, behave yourselves, take it easy, and we'll hopefully see you in the next one.